Good morning. Welcome to a, a bit of a more somber uh, episode of the show. Um, I am remembering, recognizing, realizing again that I need to be more entertaining. And I'm trying, but, uh, you know, this is my show. I, I know I want, I know I need you to watch it, but, you know, some of these episodes like this one just aren't going to be that fun, but they still need to be watched just as much. Excuse me. Uh, anyway, I'm feeling pretty, uh, pretty awful this morning. Um, had a bit of a, uh, blow up, I guess you could say, last night. I get these times where just the stress of being around the zombies is just more than I can handle. And I have to get away somehow. And I just feel like, you know, I'm just <laughs> surrounded by monsters. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reacting this way because I used to have to pretend that it was monsters I was talking about, and now I realize that it is monsters. And it kind of seems silly that I'm talking about the real thing, and it feels like I'm pretending. It's... <laughs> but anyway, just realizing that I am utterly and completely alone is quite profound. Um, there's just nobody. There's nobody to talk to about this. There's nobody that understands what I'm dealing with. I have to deal with this on my own. And I'm talking to this camera, and I don't know who the hell's watching it. You know, I'm talking to this camera, and, and you, you are the only person I can talk to, and I get no feedback. You know, I don't want feedback. You know, but I got, I got no one to talk to. Alright, there's no other humans that I've come across yet. No one else understands what's going on. It's... It's painful. It really is. I mean, just try to imagine yourself in a situation where there's nobody. There's nobody but you. There's nobody to talk to. I mean, you're, imagine you're the last human being. You're a world full of people that have been turned into zombies. Nobody around you thinks right. Nobody around you is human anymore. Let's try to imagine that. Let's try to imagine the last human being. Everyone is zombies. 97% of people are involuntary zombies. <laughs> you're one of the... You're one of the only humans alive, if not the only human alive, that recognizes what's going on. Oh, I know there's other humans out there. I know there are. I just don't think there are any in America. It's so sad what we've done to our world. Now, we... we uh, Maybe I should just talk to him. No, I'm talking to the people and I'm trying to help. Just everyone. My problem is I care too much. That's why I get stressed. Well, why do you just worry? Why don't you just not worry about it? You need to go on with your own life. Because I'm not a zombie, I can't ignore the plight of everyone around me because the plight of everyone around me is mine. You fuckers all decide that you want to fucking start killing each other off because you can't get along. I'm one of the others that you're going to kill off. I don't want that. So I am acting in my own best interest. You're not. Infinitely frustrating. And I don't care I'm not being entertained. Fuck that. Eh, I'll keep this one short. Yeah, there is a flip side to this whole being alone thing. And that's that, uh... I live in a world 
Well, it's the whole living in this zombie world thing. It's I live in a world where I am chastised and ostracized and judged and mistreated because I am a human. Because I do what you're supposed to do as a human being. I care about others. I consider other people. I'm empathetic. I communicate. I'm honest in communication. I trust people. I make sure I'm trustworthy. You know... I do all the things a human being is supposed to do to be a good human being to each other, and I get treated like shit because of it. Because of it. You know, it's like I was talking about Asperger's earlier. It's, yeah, you know, it's a great example of what this zombie world does. It treats a normal human being who seeks honest communications as a diseased individual because they seek honest communication. That's all Asperger's is. They don't rely on social cues. What are social cues? Define them, okay? Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Stumbling over our words, are we? Oh, yeah, that's because they don't exist. They're called conventions that you have artificially created, and they rely on a centralized mechanism to communicate these social cues, which is television. So all you're saying is that people with Asperger's don't watch television. Or that people that don't watch television are diseased. That's what you're saying. So, that's what your world is. You know, if you're not a zombie, you're diseased. And you are relying on a medical industry that is nothing but zombies. So, you expect them to tell you you're well? No wonder everybody feels sick. Oh, come on. You think you think with all the doctors we have in this country, all the medicine that's practiced, all the insurance, that we would have something like this massive obesity uh, epidemic if they were actually concerned about our health? Ooh. Maybe they're not. Maybe what they're telling us is healthy is the way we are. Because they don't worry about human health, they worry about the status quo of society itself. In violation of the very definition of disease, which is any affliction or affectation which diminishes an individual from his potential. Doesn't say anything about, is he normal? Is he like everyone else? Is he like everyone else is a lazy way of asking, is he normal? And it's a very bad idea. Because what if everyone else is a zombie? Alright, let's talk about the head of the zombies now, Mr. Obama. Well, he's not the head of the zombies, he's just one of the big ones. So, uh, he's uh, levying sanctions against uh, Russian officials over Ukraine. Okay, let's, let's get one thing straight. Ukraine was a setup. We did that. We probably even hired the snipers to kill the people on both sides to make it seem like it was a really desperate situation. I want you to do something. I want you to look up National Endowment for Democracy. I want you to do research on stories out of Egypt about two, three years ago, where two, two, the two organizations out of the National Endowment for Democracy, the International Republican Institute and National Democratic Institute, or vice versa, the National and International, um, were convicted in absentia because they fled the country of fomenting unrest. Now, excuse me, phone call. Sorry about that. Better business bureau calling back. Oh, kind of a angle. Well, anyway, so there's a fan behind my head. It looks like a cross. Big deal. Um, so, Mr. Obama here is levying sanctions with without the authority of Congress. He's waging war. Is what he's doing, okay? He's waging war. Um, okay, so the National Endowment for Democracy, we installed them in the Ukraine. You you don't believe me? You don't believe that Americans have fomented this unrest? There's a website that proves it. <laughs> so look up National Endowment for Democracy, Ukraine. Put that into Google. National Endowment for Democracy, Ukraine. Their website will come up where they proudly show what they have done to foment the unrest in the Ukraine teaching people how to do the very things they oppress people from doing here in the United States. <laughs> it's so fucking obvious. If you just go to the internet, if you just go to Google even, they don't hide it. They're proud of this. Come and find out what we're doing, Americans. 
we're doing this in your name and you can't do a damn thing about it because you don't even know. That's, that's what they're doing. They're proud of what they do. Or maybe they think that because they put it out on a website that everybody just knows that we're screwing with the uh, Ukraine and Venezuela. Oh, you didn't know that? Oh! Maybe you should look at the other places the National Endowment for Democracy goes. Including Malaysia. Hmm. Conspiracy theories? Oh, yeah. Lots of those. So, yeah. Do yourself some research and find out what's really going on. Find out why we're really in the Ukraine. Find out what these sanctions are really about. We're really trying to take over the whole goddamn world. Oh, but not for your benefit. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's for the 3% that run things. <laughs> well, good evening. Welcome again to Zombie Apocalypse Diaries. This evening we're talking about uh, zombies controlling your view of the world. I'm watching a show, a British show called Mongrels. It's episode 6, I think. Uh, it's the first series. I didn't have any interest in the second or anything beyond the first. It was interesting. Uh, anyway, I noticed a reference to a movie that was negative. It, they made fun of, um, in a very, very adverse way, actually, uh, the movie um, The Invention of Lying. The Invention of Lying was a very clever movie, which actually helped me discover um, a, a, a you know, helped me on my path to discovery of psychopaths and uh, zombies, I should say. Um, so here is a movie that that could lead you to understanding zombies and understanding the world without them. More importantly, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 we, yeah. This is Coke. You know, we'd like you to drink it, please. You know, that, that kind of thing. You know, that's what commercials should all be. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you had to tell the truth. <laughs> but, um... Anyway, so they, they, made a, they made fun of it in a very big way. You know, they, they said... Uh, you know, they were talking about... Um, you know, one of the characters making the biggest mistake of his life. And, and they, you know, they showed flashes to... Um, other mistakes, like he, you know, like, uh, who wants to be a millionaire type, type show or something like that, where he has a choice between an additional penny and, um, you know, or two, four, 249,999 pounds, you know, or, you know, pounds and pence, you know, you know, a penny shy, you know, and he chooses to add the penny. Instead of taking a penny less than two hundred fifty thousand, you know, as his worst mistake, and then another one was was breaking into the house of some famous clown and then shooting that famous clown, and then the next one was buying the DVD off the street, uh, obvious, you know, um, uh, Asian uh, uh, ripoff, you know, pirate copy for two pound, two pounds, which is about, you know, five, maybe six bucks in American uh, money. And, uh, you know, so, you know, out of the cheap bin, you know, buying a copy of this movie, which is about what you'd pay for it here, you know, he's saying that was this fifth worst mistake, you know, and that it was worse than this mistake he made here. Um, but, uh, which I don't even remember what that mistake was, so pardon my crappy storytelling, so. But, uh, anyway, this is, this is how they work. You know, this is psychopaths. They affect us in very subtle ways. Zombies train you in very, very subtle ways, and this is one of them. Don't watch that movie, The Invention of Line. It's crap. Yeah, it's crap. Oh, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's such crap. No, you don't want to watch that. No, that's crap. Actually, maybe you should. Maybe any time they make fun of something, you should watch it. Maybe you should watch Ishtar. Why has it made, made so much fun of it? It actually isn't that bad. So what's their beef with it? You know, what about, what about things that they say are bad that are really good, and things that they say are good that are really bad, you know, why? You know, you can't trust. You can't trust them. You really can't. And that's the lesson.